a try. 30 seconds, come on. Carlos Colon is an Army veteran. Nice, make it powerful. His buddies call him the Spartan Warrior, an elite athlete in tip-top shape. Colon had to battle back from devastating injuries in Afghanistan. Man, I don't know, I had that feeling you that just we had, were going to get You hit. had a hunch? Yeah, so I got on the gun. Cologne scars tell the tale of his 2008 deployment. He was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade. We got ambushed with RPGs, AKs, IEDs, and they shot an RPG from a wall to me, and I was in the gun, so it blew up right here in the side of the, in the other side of the glass. This is what was left of his army helmet. Cologne says he remembers nothing of the attack. During uncertain days, his family took these pictures while he was in a coma in the hospital. He says he also doesn't remember this. President George W. Bush pinning a purple heart on him. He calls it his finest moment as a U.S. soldier. When I woke up, uh, my family told me that he pinned me my purple heart. So, and then, then when I got the pictures, you know, I was like, so he pinned me, and, but I never met him, you know. So I always wanted to meet him, you know, just see him in person and thank him. Cologne got that chance. I'm the this is Carlos. Hey, Carlos. There's yeah, good to see you, buddy. I know it. Yeah. Hey. I remember him. He doesn't remember me. When President George W. Bush made a surprise visit to this gym. I was sleeping, huh? You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure you were going to wake up. <laughs> okay, anyway, huh? congratulations. Mm, Glad you. you're doing well. When I saw him, I was like, you know, awesome. I, I loved it, man. And like I said, I'll, if I could have gone again to war, under his command, I'll do it. I'm, I'm really proud. No vet wants to be looked at with self pity. Right. They want to be looked at as somebody who got hurt doing a, doing a good job. It's been nearly 10 years since their first meeting, one where a president bestowed an honor which would last a lifetime. You have the pictures to, to Yeah, I got them framed in my room. And we'll get a new picture. Huh? Yeah. You look a lot better now than you did. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Been working hard on it. Huh? Yeah, you really have. You're a good man. I'm real proud of you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm proud to serve under you. Yeah, you're a good man. Thank you. Cologne says this is his full circle moment and says without hesitation, no regrets. Like, I'm proud of every scar, every, every injury. And if I could have do it again, I would have done it. And a powerful salute to the greatest generation on this anniversary of D-Day. A ceremony held at the World War II Memorial in Washington today. It was 73 years ago. 160,000 Allied troops storming the beaches of Normandy, France. 9,000 soldiers were killed or wounded in that. Veterans placed wreaths at the Atlantic Arc of the memorial today. I, I would stay here forever if I could. I love this place. I love these ceremonies. Why is that? Heart. Because of the success of D-Day, despite the awful casualties, the Allies did succeed in breaching Hitler's coastal defense of France, and the Germans surrendered less than a year later. She is an extraordinary local woman who lost more than many of us can imagine, but has not let it interfere with her incredible outlook on life. Doreen Gensler is here now with more on this inspirational story. Hi, Jim. Tonight at 11, I'll have the story of Sharon Cauldron. A terrible blood infection almost killed her. She survived it, but at a very high cost. She lost both of her legs and both of her hands and part of her tongue. But one thing she has held on to through all of this, hope. She now has prosthetic legs, so getting up from the sofa even is a challenge. And she's learning how to use bionic hands. She learns a little bit at a time each and every day. This this new reality is an incredible challenge, but Sharon is very persistent. In fact, she says learning how to use her new limbs is actually helping her to recover. I'm really motivated to learn how to operate them and to get as close back to who I was as possible, and then I can find another purpose and go out there and get a job again and contribute. Sharon Cauldron says uh, learning how to live with this new reality is a huge challenge. It's very slow going, but she is persistent. I'll have her, all of her story tonight on News 4 at 11.